And as I mentioned, Mo Brooks has taken the podium. We are going to be sending you there live now as he gets set to talk. Our Jen Cardone is there live now, so we will send you live to hear from the representative of the 5th District of Alabama. I can't count right now. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Most importantly, I want to thank you for what you have done throughout this campaign. It has been a challenging uh, slog at times, uh, but I want to emphasize that every single person in this room who helped in this campaign is a patriot. You have done your best for the United States of America. None of you have done what you have done out of self-interest. Each and every one of you have done what you have done throughout the state of Alabama. You're just a small part of what has participated in this campaign, but you have been motivated by one thing and one thing only, and that is to do what is in the best interest of the United States of America. Our, our campaign is not made up of the folks who want to mooch off of taxpayers or who want special benefits that nobody else gets. So I want you to know that I am proud of you and I am proud to have fought for America with each and every one of you, and the fight continues after today. Now, it is always appropriate to congratulate the winners, and some of these winners might be a little bit unexpected. But I'd be remiss if I did not congratulate the Alabama Democratic Party for helping to ensure that the Democrat nominee in the Republican primary won. So congratulations to the Alabama Democratic Party. You know you're on the right side of the issues when you're being opposed in a Republican primary by the executive director of the Alabama Democratic Party. You know. You know you're doing the right thing for America when you're being opposed by the most prominent Democrat in North Alabama, Parker Griffiths, Democrat state senator, Democrat congressman, Democrat gubernatorial candidate, and when he endorses your opponent in a Republican primary, you know you're on the right side. So, Congratulations to the Democrats. They now have two nominees in the general election, Will Boyd and my opponent, who they endorsed and helped push over the finish line, both in the primary and in the uh, runoff. So congratulations to you. Another group that I'd be remiss if I did not congratulate are special interest groups generally, and more specifically, the special interest groups that support open borders and cheap foreign labor. They worked hard for their values, not values I share, I want border security, but give credit where credit is due. They were involved and engaged in this campaign, giving millions of dollars, directly or indirectly, to help ensure that they got open borders and cheap foreign labor. Now, I disagree with them 100%, but by golly, congratulations to them because they won. I don't hear a lot of cheering about that one. Um, I'm, I'm the same way as y'all are. I'm not pleased about congratulating these special interests, but they rule Montgomery. They rule Washington, D.C. They corrupt the public policy debate with the way in which they handle these matters. They fund the campaign so that they can do the kind of dirty work that they did in this particular election. I should also congratulate four people in particular who put in 15 plus million dollars into helping my opponent win by assassinating the good reputation and character of an American war hero, Mike Durant, and doing the same thing to me with brazen dishonesty on a scale that I have never seen in the 40 years that I've been a candidate. So congratulations to those four individuals. I'd be remiss if I did not add that if America and Alabama voters do not get smarter, there's no reason to have elections. If we're going to let four people determine who the next United States Senator is by putting in 15 plus million dollars as they have done, well, they might as well, as the masters of the universe, determine who our rulers are going to be. I don't like it, but that is exactly what has happened in this particular election where they have defamed 
the good name and reputation of Michael Durant, and they've done the same thing to me, no holds barred, no respect for the truth, no respect for honesty. I hate it that campaigns have become what they have become. I remember when I first ran for public office, we at least had a news media that would be proactive in disclosing and revealing bold-faced lies. But unfortunately, in Alabama, by and large, the news media has fallen flat on its face and has not been doing its job as the fifth estate. Now, unfortunately, there are also some entities that lost. The Alabama Republican Party lost in a variety of different ways by allowing the Democratic Party to have such influence, not only in this race, but in other races around the state of Alabama. America quite clearly lost. Democrats and rhinos, as you may recall, they are the ones who in 2017 and 2018 defeated our America First agenda. So if you are for border security, if you are for minimizing deficit and debt, if you are for moral values, if you're for the Second Amendment right to bear arms, if you're for free speech, if you're for freedom of religion, if you're for repeal of socialized medicine and Obamacare, if you're opposed to inflation, if you won't lower gasoline prices, the list goes on and on, you fall in the loser category because of what happened in the state of Alabama in this election. We are sending to Washington, D.C., assuming that there's a victory for my opponent in the general election. We are sending to Washington, D.C. the exact opposite of what we need in the United States Senate. But the voters have spoken. They might not have spoken wisely. They may have been, dis they may have been seduced by brazenly false advertising, but nonetheless, they have spoken, and I respect their will. Now, another loser could be myself and our campaign. I reject that. By golly, we did what we could do for our country against virtually overwhelming odds, overwhelming financial odds more than anything else, overwhelming power of the special interest groups that dictate so much and control so much in Washington, D.C. But that does not mean that we should end our fight. This fight continues because we love our country and we want America first, not special interest first. So many will say I lost. I most respectfully disagree. Why? Because I covet truth and honor more than I covet being a United States Senator. I fought, I fought side by side with you for our country, and that is a big win under any circumstances. I will no longer be the target of assassin's bullets. That's a big win. I will no longer be in the middle of a United States Congress that has repeatedly failed America so many different times at so many different levels, whether it be inflation, whether it be gasoline prices, whether it be border security, whether it be the erosion of our moral values. Let me tell you, that is a really depressing place to work when you see time after time after time congressmen and senators selling out our country because they worship the mighty dollar that comes from special interest. And while I will regret not being in the middle of that fight, I will not regret for one minute seeing how often for 12 years Congress has failed to meet the challenges that our country has faced. It didn't make any difference if Democrats were in charge or Republicans were in charge. By and large, we failed to rise to the occasion. All you have to do is look at our southern border to know that's true. All you've got to do is look at a $30 trillion debt to know that is true. It is a win to not be in that environment anymore. Now, some really nice things that are really big wins. I will have more time to be a better husband to my wife. That is a big win. Additionally, I will have more time to be a better father to my children. That's a big, big win. Most, most of my kids 
and kids in law have never known me when I was not a public servant. Think about that. I was elected to office just a month before my first child was born. So I've had to sacrifice my time off and away in the legislature or in Washington, and it's going to be great to be able to interact with my family, my kids, and my kids-in-law. All eight of them are absolutely the best anyone could hope for. And finally, I will have more time to enjoy my 13 grandchildren. Yes. That is a huge, huge win. So. I might can coach their teams. Certainly I can go to their games and their swim meets. Maybe even some of their dancing and music recital lessons, although that's my favorite. I prefer the sports. <laughs> so if you'll please forgive me, it is time for me to hand the torch over to patriots who will continue the fight for America. We have a lot of people from the younger generation that are willing to carry that torch, and I'm so proud of them. And I want them to fight for America as I have. But in the meantime, I'm going to start enjoying that huge, huge win of my being able to be with my family and in particular my grandchildren. So God bless you and God bless America. <laughs> They've got me anchored. And that was Congressman Mo Brooks. Virtually, it seemed he was conceding in the U.S. Senate race. We are still awaiting to hear from Katie Britt. Some of the language that Brooks used in his speech did come off as though he was conceding, saying that he would have more time to spend with his family, but he did say that he was going to continue to watch the results. Again, we are still awaiting to hear from Katie Britt. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming in.